Hello and welcome to GMAX Studios. Today we are going to talk about lenses. And yes, this is a long awaited episode. So let us get on with it. One of the questions that I get asked most often is what is the difference between a zoom and a prime lens? Now, before we answer that, let us try and understand what is focal length? If you've looked at your DSLR carefully, you might have noticed this strange looking symbol. This symbol is called the film plane or the sensor plane and it denotes the place where the sensor actually is inside the camera body. When we measure the camera to subject distance, it is measured from this sensor plane and not from the front of the lens. Now every lens has an optical center. The distance between the optical center and the sensor plane is called the focal length. For example, in this 50mm lens, this distance is 50mm. Don't panic, it's not as complicated as it sounds. This is just the technical explanation. As far as photography is concerned, we just need to know that the 50mm lens is considered to be the normal lens because the field of view, the angle of view that it sees is approximately equivalent to what we see, the humans see. So the 50mm is called the normal lens. Now as the focal length becomes shorter, becomes smaller, like 35, 24, 18, anything below 50, the lenses start seeing wider and wider than the normal 50mm lens. So they are called wide angle lenses. Some lenses are even able to see at an angle of 180 degrees or close to it. These lenses are called fisheye lenses. Similarly, as the focal length becomes more than 50, like 85, 105, 135 or 200 mm, the lenses start seeing in a more narrow field of view, making the objects appear as if they have come closer to us. These are called telephoto lenses. A lot of lens makers designate their lenses as medium telephotos or super telephotos or super wides or ultra wides. For me, this is purely jargon. What is important is the focal length of the lens. So back to the original question as to what is the difference between a zoom lens and a prime lens. So a prime lens is a lens which has got a fixed focal length. It has got only one single focal length. And this is the reason why they are also called fixed lenses. Whereas in a zoom lens, you can change how narrow or wide the lens can see by turning the zoom ring. So an example of a prime lens would be a 50mm lens or a 35mm lens or an 85mm lens. Any lens which has got a single focal length. Whereas a zoom lens would be uh, let's say a 24-120 or a 28-300 which extends from 28mm which is a pretty wide angle right down to 300 which is quite an extreme telephoto. Okay to sum it up. A 50mm lens is called a normal lens because it sees like a normal person does and anything below that is categorized as a wide lens and anything above that are usually called telephotos. A prime or a fixed lens has only one single focal length whereas in zoom lenses it has got a range of focal lengths which you can zoom in and zoom out. In prime lenses they have a saying that your legs are the zoom. Mm -hmm.
So the question now becomes, what is the big deal about prime lenses? Why not just buy a big zoom lens and get over with it? Well, the advantages of zoom lenses are many. Number one being you can get a variety of photographs with a single zoom lens. Zooms are very convenient and flexible. You can zoom in or out of any scene or person and get the picture you want. You can save a lot of weight and space in your camera bag if you are carrying just a single zoom lens. A few years ago when I went to Ladakh, I was not well and due to the lack of oxygen there, I decided to carry only a 28-300 zoom and a 50mm prime lens which always travels with me. And to be honest, I think I shot 95% of the pictures in Ladakh with the 28-300 zoom lens. Now coming to prime lenses, they are primarily considered to be good because of the following reasons. The first one being sharpness. The prime lenses are generally more sharp than the zooms uh, because they have got lesser optical elements in them. There is lesser glass in them because they have a single focal length and therefore they are supposed to be sharper than the zoom lenses. Though the newer zoom lenses or the top end zoom lenses are pretty much very sharp too. Prime lenses also have bigger apertures than the zooms and this not only allows more light to come into and hit the sensor, uh, therefore you can shoot in low light, but it also helps you create a shallow depth of field uh, where you can separate your background and your subject is in perfect focus like I'm shooting uh, with a 35mm 1.4 lens right now so I'm in focus hopefully and the background is uh, would be pretty much you know blurred and that is an effect that a lot of people look for while shooting especially in videos because in videos this tends to give you a more cinematic feel as they call it. Aperture is what lens makers charge you for and that actually determines the cost of a lens. Uh, one exception being uh, the 50mm 1.8 which is considered to be the best prime lens in the world by many including myself. In case you want to know why you can uh, click the link in the description below and uh, the video is there. Usually prime lenses are smaller than zooms, so if you want to carry a light bag or don't want to attract too much attention to your equipment while shooting, you can just slap on a prime lens and start shooting. The smaller size and the lightweight is a great asset while doing street photography. So coming back to zooms. The magnification power of a zoom lens is expressed as X. So an 18200 zoom lens will be said to be an 11X zoom because 18mm into 11 times equals 191, I think, and uh, which is approximately 200mm. And because the difference between the widest and and the tele end is 11 times it is said to be an 11x zoom this applies to all the zooms so usually you see zoom lenses advertised as 11x or 20x or 30x or whatever so this is nothing but the magnification power of the zoom the difference between its widest end and its telephoto end zoom lenses are primarily of two kinds the variable aperture zooms and the constant aperture zooms. I keep saying primarily and generally because you know in photography for everything that you say there will be an exceptional statement and there will be this one person who will say that oh no uh, you are wrong that uh, this is uh, uh, the exception to the rule. Of course there are exceptions to every rule so uh, 
but generally speaking zooms are available in uh, two flavors one is the variable aperture zooms and the constant aperture zooms the variable aperture zooms have got a variable aperture so like this 28 300 mm lens has got a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6 which means that you will get an aperture of 3.5 at 28 mm and as you start zooming in and move towards 300 mm the aperture will start closing down and at 300 mm or maybe even before that it will close down to 5.6 so at 300 mm 5.6 is the biggest aperture that you will get and this is a limitation of the lens there's nothing you can do about it so when you buy a lens or when you shoot with a lens this is an important factor to look out for as opposed to this the constant aperture zooms the aperture does not change as you zoom in and uh, so prime example being the 24 120 f4 so at 24 mm you get an f4 at 120 mm you get an f4 the aperture does not close down same thing with the 1635 or the 1735 2.8 24 70 2.8 70 200 2.8 these are all constant aperture lenses you will get the same 2.8 aperture at the wide end and at the telephoto end so in fact 1735 or 1635-2.8, 24-70-2.8 and 70-200-2.8 are considered to be the holy trinity of lenses because between three of them you get a fabulous zoom range right from 17mm which is pretty wide right down to 200 and an open aperture of 2.8 and this is absolutely very very high end professional uh, gear this is professional glass it gives superb quality and you get an aperture of 2.8 which makes you uh, which makes it very easy to get the shallow depth of field and therefore it is preferred by professionals and if you have these three zoom lenses in your bag you can do pretty much everything with it on the lens you will also see the focus distance scale which tells you the distance between the subject and the camera remember the distance between the subject and the camera is also calculated from the subject to the sensor or the film plane as we had discussed earlier so anyway so if you're shooting stills on autofocus primarily you really couldn't be bothered without uh, with the distance scale but if you're shooting manual focus and you are shooting say something like street photography or you're shooting video this comes in pretty handy which brings us to the next point about lenses which is pretty important to me might not be important to you it is minimum focus distance So as the name suggests, the minimum focus distance is the minimum distance at which the lens can focus on an image. And uh, why is this important? Uh, let's take the example between two lenses, the 50mm lens and the 85mm lens. The minimum focus distance of the 85mm lens is 0.85 meters or 2.79 feet while the minimum focus distance of the 50mm lens is 0.45 meters or 1.5 feet so it is really no surprise that if you're shooting at mid-range your subject is mid-range and you keep the camera distance between you and the subject constant you will get a tighter shot when you are shooting with an 85 but when you move in close that is when the big difference occurs you are actually able to get a bigger magnified image with a 50mm lens because the 50mm lens is actually capable of focusing at a much lesser distance than the 85mm. So those of you who shoot products 
or who shoot uh, vlogs, uh, video blogs, this might be an important consideration for them because uh, there's no point having a lens and trying to do a video blog if the minimum focus distance is uh, say what seven feet because I mean what will you do with it. Getting closer brings us to the subject of macro lenses. Generally speaking, broadly speaking, macro lenses allow us to come to the subject much much closer than normal lenses would. It doesn't matter if Nikon decides to call them micro lenses but yes they are all macro lenses but technically a macro lens is one which allows you to reproduce a subject at a 1 is to 1 ratio. Now what does this mean? This means that if an object is 1 millimeter in size the imprint or the photograph of the subject or the reproduction of the subject on the sensor will also be one millimeter therefore it will be a one is to one reproduction ratio so to give you an example uh, let's take this scale this ruler and shoot it now since i'm shooting it with a full frame sensor which is 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters approximately that's the size and you see that we can fit in exactly or close to 36 millimeters in the picture which means that each millimeter is being reproduced as one millimeter on the sensor too this is uh, called a macro lens now some lens makers designate macro to the lenses which have a reproduction capability of 1 is to 2. While this is not bad, uh, 1 is to 2 is pretty close actually, but uh, you might want to uh, keep that in mind uh, that 1 is to 1 ratio is a much better lens in terms of macro photography, especially if you're doing some hardcore macro photography like uh, again like jewels, like products or insects or flowers or pollen. So you might decide to keep this in mind. Macro lenses uh, are pretty expensive but if you are on a budget and you are still interested in doing close-up photography there are quite a few ways by which you can do it without breaking the bank. Uh, to know how to do that there's another link to uh, the video in the description below just click on it. So apart from this there are a few speciality lenses like the tilt shift lenses which we will talk about at a later stage. But one of the important things, one of the most important things perhaps while selecting a lens to buy or to shoot with is something called perspective. So how do you explain perspective? Perspective is your point of view of a subject. Now suppose you see me I am sitting here and you can probably see me from head to this and I'm shooting uh, with a 35 mm lens now is it possible to reproduce this image size with an 85 yes of course it is and you can just put on an 85 move the camera back and you will have me in the same size but what will change what will change is the perspective to explain the concept we shot our subject at different focal lengths while trying to maintain the same subject magnification. See what happens as we come closer and closer to the subject and use wider lenses. The perspective begins to change. So much so that you end up with a really distorted perspective and image when you are shooting with an extremely wide lens. So the wider your lens is, the more distorted the subject will be. So choosing a focal length to shoot a subject is extremely important. So you see that the perspective is an extremely important factor while considering what focal length to use while shooting. And uh, it's not just a matter of zooming in or zooming out. You have to choose your lenses carefully according to the kind of photography that you do. So do subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and in the next episode we will talk about sensor sizes and how sensor size affects the focal length of your lens amongst many other things. Until then, bye bye and take care.